Meeting called to order. Please rise for a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence and honor our troops, our police, our Yep, Mr. Benneke, and uh, I just want the public to know that this presentation will also be on our website. So I know you can't really see it now. You're going to have to kind of listen to it, but, uh, you know, I don't know if that could be turned a little bit. We've tried everything. We've tried everything. <laughs> oh, we can't see it on there? Okay. So there will be a copy of this slide it. presentation on online. All set? Yep. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, uh, Council. It's good to be here tonight. My name is Bob Benneke. Um, my CFO license is index 0093 just for the record. We're here to present the 2024 budget for your consideration and introduction. Introduction meets on first reading, and there'll be a public hearing in June. Can you just pull the microphone a little closer to you? So that's... Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. To my right is um, Jen Stillman. She is the treasurer, as you well know, for a treasurer and future CFO with, uh, with Godspeed, which we talked about last October. And to my left is our esteemed auditor, uh, Mr. Paul Lurch. And uh, he really doesn't need an introduction. I can go down his resume, but it would take too long. Suffice it to say, he's one of the top two or three orders in the state. Yeah, it means something. Um, we have your budget for you tonight. You should have received a copy of it. it. It's essentially a steady state budget, as all budgets are in New Jersey these days. Uh, the, the issue that we get into, and I, I had an earlier meeting today and one on Tuesday with a large city, is that we have two rails that we look at. The first rail is the 2% tax levy cap, and the second rail is the 2.5% appropriations cap, also known as the budget cap, and that budget cap is allowed to be increased by 1% to allow some headroom for inflation. That's done by an index ordinance, which you'll have on the agenda tonight for introduction. The, the reason I say it's within rails is that we usually, um, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, one would sit around and talk about their budgets and what they would ask for and what they want to do during the course of the year. That has essentially been thrown out the window. Why? Because you have a 2% cap on one side, revenues, you have a 2.5% cap on the other side, appropriations, with that 1% index, and you don't have any real place to go. Once you add your police department in, and your salaries ostensibly, once you add your reserve program, collect the taxes in, and your debt services, some other items that we're going to talk about tonight, you really have no place to go. You, you know, you can't say, well, I want to buy a $50,000 widget because it just doesn't fit within those caps. Therefore, the widgets can't be even considered. 
But that said, we try to do some things. Uh, the first thing we do is we try to just scope out what the budget is. The budget this year without the grants, we'll get to that in a second, is seventeen million two nineteen. And what the grants added in is approximately eighteen million fifty three thousand dollars. And the municipal tax levy is going up from approximately eleven point nine million to twelve point two three eight million, which is about a two percent increase in the tax levy. That's after all the revenue sources are done. The, the tax levy cap at two percent. It's not. In, it's not inconsequential or um, coincidental that we have a two percent increase in our tax levy because that is the cap. Sometimes it goes a little bit more, a little bit north of that for exclusions. Sometimes a little bit south because you're able to pick up revenues or new rateables. But we're at two percent. We're going to have with all the. Um, expenditures and appropriations baked in, somewhat less than $100 a year tax increase based upon the 2% for the average homeowner. The average home is assessed just under $600,000 in, in a lot. The focus of this year's budget, and um, council person chair will bear this out, is com commitment to capital investment. We're making a big commitment in capital investment and capital improvements throughout the community. The foundational point, I think you agree, Anthony, is the roads program. We're going to be spending at least $2.7 million in roads throughout the entire community. Three big buckets of uh, New Jersey Department of Transportation grants funds will be received to help offset that, and the, the remainder will be town money. We have the DPW, our engineer, and the interim administrator managing those projects. And hopefully they'll be starting imminently, uh, if not started by Monday or Tuesday. Hopefully it'll be within the next few weeks and throughout, again, the entire community. We also are, are improving the Boot Avenue tennis courts. That's been on the board for a while. We're also using a grant from the Morris County Open Space and Historic Parks and Committee um, Agency to get that done. We have facility improvements using federal funds. That's for the roof to this building. In this building, uh, keep in mind, is the police department, OEM, and the light and the court that we're sitting in. So that's a what's called a tier one use of federal funds, and that's the final ARP funding. ARP meaning uh, the American Recovery Program under the COVID funding. And then we have $250,000 as, as I would call it, seed money for the fire department as we purchase a new fire truck in the next year or so. And we have $275,000 for police video and camera upgrades uh, throughout the entire police department. The chief and his officers have requested upgrades and new camera equipment to be in compliance with state and federal guidelines. So we have that in the budget. And we also have a $75,000 uh, appropriation for heavy duty police department vehicle. That whole bucket, that whole system adds up to over $4 million of capital investment in the community. And that goes well with what we're trying to do is improve the entire community and improve um, the service level and make sure that taxes stay, stay as reasonable as possible. The next, the next slide shows your 23 to 24 budget comparison with approximately a half a dozen or so key ticket items that the borough spends money on. And the borough's budget is a relatively small budget of $18 million. Of that budget, you have police department spending about $3 million. That's about 17% of your total. You have debt service at about $1.9 million, or about 11%. You have the reserve fund collected taxes. It's actually a reserve for unpaid taxes. We don't, it's not that we don't collect them, it's that People at home or wherever don't pay them. But 50 years ago, they decided to call it reserve for uncollected taxes. Solid waste collection is approximately 1.4 million at 8.1%. Our pension bill is $1.4 million. That includes Social Security, by the way. And that's uh, approximately 1.4 million. Again, that's about 8%. Streets and road maintenance is 1.3 million, or about 8% as well. 
library is about 821,000. That's 4.8 percent of our total tax levy. Keep in mind that the library appropriation is mandated by state law, and it is required to be on both sides of the budget. You spend it, the 821,000, you raise it as a separate tax. Although the municipality gets dinged for it in our tax rate. The landfill costs are $442,000, about 25 to 3% of our total budget. Group insurance is about $985,000, about 6%. All that adds up to about 75% of the budget. You just go to those several buckets and you've got 75% of your budget. That's the other reason why those roundtable discussions that we used to have, and they're not, not that they're not important and not that they couldn't be edifying, it's just that we know that 75% of the budget is here. You have a 2% cap and a, th and a maximum 3.5% cap with inflation running in the, in the municipal sector at about 5 and 6%. You have nowhere to go. You just take these six or seven items, and like I said last October, I don't know if the mayor remembers, but like I said last October, you can do any budget in November. You just have to wait for state aid to come out from the governor's budget. So you've got your budget to put together. The problem is that you have to wait for the state aid numbers to come out in March, as they have. It was about March 14th. In addition, we have um, pass-through grants this year. The pass-through grants are led by about 580000 just a little bit less, in the ARP funding uh, for the roof here and also for um, the fire equipment that I talked about. Then we have capital improvements. We have pay-as-you-go capital of $500,000 in this year's budget. It includes the video camera, it includes the down payment for the roads, and it includes the um, heavy-duty vehicle for the police department. It's all in your budget package. The capital improvements are about 3% of the budget, so now we're up to 78%. Then if you just add recreation, court, which is mandated by the state as well, it's about another 400,000, and recreation and code enforcement, you're up to about another seven or eight hundred thousand dollars, another three percent. You're well into the eighty percent, eighty-five percent of your budget. Just these ten items. So, now we have a sheet that we've sent out that summarizes the state official budget that shows last year and this year and salaries and wages and all that to give you a guide. And by all means, if you have any questions, Council Councilman Chair will be happy to send it along to me, Jen. Of course, Paul, any, any of the members of the finance team, and of course, Tom Carroll as well. Again, the focus is on in infrastructure upgrades and building up, if you will, the um, infrastructure of Kinelon. Our revenues, we have a, a pretty simple revenue stack that we use every year. I also put a pie chart in. Somebody told me that Kinelon likes pie charts, <laughs> so you yeah, throw one or two in for, for the heck of it. The, this is like your sources in a um, business budget or a business um, project area. You have your surplus utilized. Think of that as your retained earnings that you're using to supplement your sales. Miscellaneous revenue, just various miscellaneous revenue sources, um, code enforcement fees, municipal court fees, and the like. And you have grants. Last year we didn't have any grant revenues in the 2023 budget, which was fine. We're including them all this year, and we're sort of truing them up. Re receipts from the link with taxes, that's the receipts from the taxes that aren't paid. We are allowed to pick them up this year. Then we have property tax uh, revenue, again, going up about $266,000 from $11,972,000 to $12,238,000. Property tax for the library is going up about $70,000 from $750,000 to eight twenty one. Our total budget is then going from 16228 to 18053 but remember the grants of 833 were not included last year, so that's why we used the 17.2 number. The municipal tax rate is going up 3.7%, but it's going to be blended down a little bit lower than that, and because of the library tax and some of the other credits that we're taking, so that's at 11.43%. One of the things that I know Councilman Chero and I talk about often is trying to get these exactitude for percentages, and it's really a gotcha and a getcha with the percentages because the board of taxation can round up, some rounding can occur in the. Remember, here we're taking the library or we're taking the municipal tax rate out to 5.8654%, and when it gets rounded, it could round up or it could round down 
and it can change our numbers, especially on the amount that we expect homeowners to pay, the average homeowner, et cetera, by a few dollars. So when we say just under $100 or just under $90 as your average bill for the municipal side as an increase, we don't want to say 9250 because it could be 8975 or it could be 10120. You don't know until the bills come out because of that rounding factor. So we're doing a good job. We know it's going to be in that two to two and a half percent range, but we don't want to get into exactitude. But it's going to be under $100 for the municipal side. Again, what I did is I put the appropriations up just as another highlight so you could see it without seeing the comparison to 2023. You can see exactly what the budget looks like without the pass-through grants. And again, you have these seven, eight categories, and that's your budget. You add your capital improvements in for this year, that's your budget. You can't, you know, somebody can't say, well, cut it back so that, oh, okay, that's fine, you can do that. But if you cut it back to do that, you're losing police officers, or you're losing capital improvements, or you're losing something else. That's not to say you can't be efficient. We all want to make sure that we save all the money we can at the same time, it's not like it's a, um, it's a new thing that we're dealing with. We're dealing with our police department, which is excellent. We're dealing with our DPW, which is also excellent. And they need some, some sufficient funding to be excellent. Then we have our, this sheet I, I really like. We have our proposed uh, tax status. We show the county, the school, and the local taxes and how it breaks out. We show the uh, net valuation taxable. For last year and for this year, we're going up about $7 million. And then we show the, the levy change for various assessed values, getting about 100, going up and killing about 1.5 million, and showing what the tax would be expected total and what the local tax is as a share of that. And we really do like to um, show this so that people can say, well, my house isn't worth 550,000, it's worth 480, or it's worth a million or it's assessed at one of those numbers. So you can see it a little bit more readily, and I, I think it's a, it's a good handy um, tool. And again, the municipal tax rate is, is going to end up to be somewhere in this neighborhood of 2%, total tax rate in about 3%. Our tax rate breakdown, the way our, our taxes break down, you're responsible for just under 20%. The schools are re responsible for 69%. Uh, the library is 1%, and the county is just around 10% of the total tax bill that's sent out. So, you know, we have excellent schools, well, it costs money. And remember, I just live five minutes away from here down the road, so everyone knows that Kenilon schools are great, um, but it costs money. The police department's excellent, there's not a better police department going, but it costs money. It's, it's the same thing with DPW. Same thing with our recreation programs that we provide. Look at the youth sports going on over here in this lighter field as well as across the street. It's great, but it costs money. And then, of course, the county is the county. We don't talk about that very much. Um, I have other spreadsheets. We have other documents. I know that Councilman Chertow has sent around. I think you should be really proud that you're doing all this for $18 million this year. That's my takeaway. Of course, Jen has been very helpful. Of course, Council. President Chertow has been extremely helpful, the mayor and his group, and the administrator, and of course, um, Paul, who's new to the town, who's going to be here a long time. So, I'll answer any questions that you might have. I, I hope I didn't say too much. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. In the allocation for the uh, American Rescue Plan money for the roof, does that include the library as well as the school? No. Well, that's a great question. It depends what the bids will come in at. We're, we're thinking that the bids are going to come in just north of $200,000 for this building. So we're going to bid out both as an option. But the, the short answer is probably not. We probably won't have enough money for that. And how is the library group going to get done? The library has an appropriation of $850,000 in their budget. We should talk to them about it. Well, it would be nice to operate the whole library. Well, it's not really to operate the whole library. It's to satisfy a statutory requirement. The statutory requirement is that we have a tax levy of $850,000 for library purposes. What they choose to do with it, and the mayor's the appointing authority in the borough, what they choose to do with it is a, a subject of communication between the, the town, the borough council, the mayor, and of course the library. But if you want to add that to the list of projects, well, you can certainly do that. I thought it was on the 
list of projects. You had mentioned that at some point. Yeah, that we were at yeah, both. Yeah, it was both this building and yeah, we still need to talk library. to the to the library. Do Do we know the um, the budget from the school yet? No, I did estimate it though. It should be coming out within the next week or so. I estimated their tax levy. Okay, and what, then what would that bring the overall um, tax percentage to be? About three point two percent. Three point two one seven percent. Three point two. I'm estimating that their tax rate is going to go up three point five percent. Is that normal for them? Yeah, it's normal. That's what we use throughout the state for uh, Board of Education right now. Okay. We really, I mean, we really don't control it. We just have to put a number in. If I put in 2%, it goes up 3.5%. It's a gotcha. If I put in 3.5%, it goes up 2.5%. Call me a liar. I was wrong. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Well, I do, I do like the, the future budget projections all the way out to 2029. That's very helpful. So. Yeah, it's a guy. You know, it's, it's our, our guess right now. As we go through the next year and Jen gets a little bit more settled in with the CFO role, we'll actually get a little bit more refined. But it's a really good tool for everyone to see also what I'm speaking of is the two rails. And you're really squeezed by health costs. You're squeezed by the reserve fund collective taxes. You're squeezed by these things. And people at home... And people who run for mayor and council don't really realize that sometimes. Yeah. I, know, I know Jen's working hard. I went into her office the other day, and she still has all of the the other CFO prior, all of his stuff still on her desk, and, and his placards up, family <laughs> pictures, and she's in the middle working away, working away. So she'd give her a couple minutes to at least clean up her office, Absolutely. all right? Yeah. <laughs> I've been asked her to clean it up for six months. She has a lot of kids that put those pictures up on her wall, but... But thank you for your hard work. I don't know if anybody else has any questions. Yeah, I just I just want to I was going to bring it up in my report earlier here. I just want to I want to thank Jen and Bob um, for all the all the hard work putting into this. You know, um, as finance chair, I'm 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 just the uh, I'm just the pass through. Um, really, it's it's Jen and Bob that are the day to day um, going through all the the numbers and uh, and more importantly putting up with me on a day-to-day -day basis of questions and 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 why is this how is this and uh, so I just want to thank them for all the all the time and dedication to uh, they put into this budget you've got a real good crew in finance and I can't stress enough I won't be here in another year or so at all and certainly two months as a CFO you have an excellent crew take them against anybody in the state they're just Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Any comments? No, I think Bob. I, I think Bob said it all, and uh, I think you are in good hands. And um, I'm sure that the transition will be very smooth as, as Bob uh, leaves his position as CFO. I've explained to, to Jen um, that we're available anytime. Call, email. You know, we're not willing for that kind of stuff. So feel free to just reach out and get comfortable. And I think that's what this is. I think it's part of a transition, just trying to, to learn. She's going to have to learn us, and we're going to have to learn her a little bit, her team. Uh, but I think this will be smooth as uh, so, so Looking forward to it. Thank you. Can you hang pictures? I, I can do it all. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your hard work. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Karen, do you have the treasurer's report?
Okay, thank you, Karen. Uh, Mayor's report, uh, just kind of a, first I'd like to start, I guess, about Lake Reality. I, my objective today, and I think the council as well, uh, was to kind of throw the ball back to Lake Reality and say, hey, you know, you guys can collectively get this done. So I think that was my thought of tonight. I don't know, it didn't go over too well, it didn't seem like, but, uh, but my, my, what we're doing up here, we only have one option of what the state is telling us that we have to do. You know, but I know you guys have the ability to be part of the solution and, and work together as a, as a community and, and pull it off. I think your new committee is working great together. Um, I feel that it's going to happen. I'm excited about that. I, I just, I'm, I'm worried about the lakefront home people because they, they only show up at this meeting when it's in front of the public and they're not being part of the solution. And, and in order for that to happen, <clears throat> they're not going to listen to what's going on behind the scenes and then just show up at our meetings and tell us uh, what we're doing wrong and not sitting with you guys on Tuesday night and Wednesday. I know you met three times since our our last meeting, if they're not going to sit in those meetings with you guys and tell them what their concerns are, I'm not sure what we can do for them. But I, I do know our role up here is we have to follow the law. The state of New Jersey told us this is how this is going to work, and we have to follow that. But what you guys do behind the scenes, that's that's lake reality. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that uh, the lakefront homes now join in your next meeting and, 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 as I say, become part of the solution. So. So anyhow, this this uh, this week, I, uh, I'm sorry, the beginning of next week, we have all of the kids from Stony Brook School coming to Town Hall for a tour. So I'm excited to lead them through the police department, our library, our DPW, our fire department. So I want to thank everybody that's going to help, and I look forward to seeing the kids. Um, Friday night, I'll be representing the borough at the Interfaith Food Pantry dinner and fundraiser. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, April 10th, the full council and um, myself met with Smoke Rise Board at the Smoke Rise Inn. I want to thank them for their uh, their courtesy of a, an amazing dinner at the Smoke Rise Inn. But we were able to share ideas and concerns throughout the two communities, so I thought that was a great night. This Saturday, as I'm sure most of the councilmen will give you a little uh, snapshot of, we have a I have a triborough parade for baseball. I have a Kinelon baseball ceremony. I have a townwide cleanup, so I'm hoping. I know Bill's going to throw a try to guilt everybody in this room to show up for our uh, townwide cleanup on Saturday. So hopefully you'll be there, but I'm sure Bill will give you all of the uh, the information. So I want no Bill. Bill's got more. He's going to have you sign up your name before you leave. So um, <laughs> you're in. We'll supply the garbage bags and everything else. So. <laughs> uh, but besides that, I want to move on to our uh, uh, council committee reports, and we'll start with uh, open space. Councilman Yago. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so sad to meet last month with all the members in attending, and it was uh, nice to have them all there. An enthusiastic group, and I want to thank them for volunteering their time. Uh, Saturday is the Earth Day cleanup for Kinawan. It starts at 9 30, goes till 2 p.m. Uh, please volunteer if you have time. Gloves and bags will be provided. Uh, any, all the supplies for cleaning up. Uh, you can pick them up at the Kinelon DPW. Uh, if you have an area that you want to clean up and group, come get your bags, your gloves, organize it, and clean up your area. If not, uh, at the DPW, I'm sure they can put you out into a, with a group to clean up uh, an area of town. Some other things that they're working on, and I'll be reporting on later, is uh, they're working on a site for a dog park and a community garden. Uh, thank you, Mayor Smith. Okay, thank you, Councilman. All right, we'll move on to personnel. Councilman Harris. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we're uh, putting the final touches on the um, PDA contract. Uh, it would probably have been finished if it were not for the fact that I did not check my email uh, this morning was only able to check it at 5.30 this evening. So uh, we had hoped to distribute the finalized contract to the rest of council so that they could see it actually today before the meeting, but again, I, I dropped the ball. So uh, hopefully we'll have that tomorrow or the day after. And uh, I believe the uh, entire committee has, has seen the contract and we have yet to uh, present the Final version to the PBA, but given the fact that the, the 
majority of the points that are addressed in the contract are uh, have, have been given to the PBA. They seem to be in favor of it, and we feel like it's uh, a very distinct possibility that we'll be able to wrap this up and have it uh, introduced and then taken care of by the, by the June meeting. Uh, one thing uh, in terms of training that I'd like to uh, mention was the Triborough First Aid Squad. Last month, did a training on death and dying, which in which they were uh, counseling them how to deal in situations where, for themselves, where they're dealing with uh, patients that they are not able to save, what sort of uh, psychological impact it might have on them, and also how to comfort patients, uh, possibly in the stages where they can do nothing for those patients. And uh, it's not something that we really think about. things that our EMTs and firemen and even police have to deal with on occasion. And so the kind of training is very important and I'm glad that they were able to take it. And that is the end of my report. Okay, thank you, Councilman. I'll we'll move on to Public Works and Recreation. Councilman Maybe. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm going to start with our uh, uh, cage, which is uh, referred to over at the KRB, KRP field. Uh, we're moving forward with the uh, rehabilitation of the existing basketball court over there. Uh, we've got uh, the paving contractor in place, ready to go. Uh, as of today, I just secured a fence contractor, which saved us roughly about $8,000 from the co-op price. I was able to locate a, a fence company that I worked in the past doing large projects. He just sent the quote in today, and I know uh, Tom directed Laura to go ahead and get a purchase order, so that, that was a nice little hit on saving a, a, a good chunk of money on the, on the fence replacement, apples to apples. Um, jump over to paving. Paving's begun. We're over milling on uh, Foothill right now. They're going to do Hearthstone uh, Hillside. The paving crew will come in once they finish the, the milling. Then the paving crew will jump over to um, the East Lace. East Lake section, K Hart and Mountainside. I'm not sure if they're going to go into K Hart first or go into Face the Lakes. Something that's important to note with the East Lake area uh, Midland Trail, Sylvan Trail, Rockwood, Ledgewood, parts of Lagoon, uh, also Greenwood. That section of Face the Lakes is not going to be paved this year. I know some of the residents are going to be asking a lot of questions and wondering how come. We have extensive drainage issues in that area. And if we go in there and resurface that area only to come back a year or two years after and rip up all that fresh asphalt, it, it's really just wasting a tremendous amount of money. So. I think as this council and just myself, I'm going to ask those residents to understand we're trying to be smart with how we spend the money. Unfortunately, the drainage is going to be quite, quite expensive and we do not have the funding for it this year. So we're going to be responsible and hold off just on those sections only. The, the goal is to go ahead and um, fix the drainage next year and complete the paving next year. Um, so pay, paving is rolling along. Um, the only areas that are in question are our secondary uh, DOT grant roads, which is Denise, Powderhorn, um, Tammy, and some of the section over there. Unfortunately, uh, Tom Barati still has to finalize some of the plans and get them certified. We had a pre-construction meeting on Tuesday this week and I spoke to the uh, contractors directly and had told them we're going to try to push these plans out and get them approved and hopefully we will uh, be able to get you back maybe in August or September. We'll have to see about that because I, I know this contractor is going to become very busy. Um, kudos to uh, Councilman Churdo, um, Borough Administrator Tom Carroll, Bob Benneke, um, John Whitehead, Joe Niosi, and myself, 
we have been on top of this paving. Um, the, the nature of the situation is normally Kenilworth pays with their co-op contractor, um, which happens to be Riverview. In this circumstance, Riverview has been awarded the Morris County Co-op, the Passaic County Co-op, and the Bergen County Co-op, which is unusual, which means they are going to be so busy, it would be very hard for us to get them in later in the year. Um, the other advantage to us starting earlier now, generally speaking, especially in the summer months, we usually get hit with fuel surcharges because we get increases in fuel costs. Uh, I'm quite certain right now, uh, based on what the co-op price is and where the current gallon uh, price per gallon is, we're, we're going to stay neutral or actually maybe save a little. So it, it's been a benefit all around and to everybody who uh, pushed this to make this happen. Um, hopefully everything goes smooth. We're, we're already out there paving, which is way earlier than probably we've ever done. So it, it's, that's moving in a, a very good direction. Um, recreation, I have a small novel from Mellon. Uh, just bear with me a sec. Okay. Uh, spring baseball. Opening day for baseball in Kittlewan is Saturday. The skills competition, competition will take place all day at Boot Avenue Field. Softball clinic and T-ball are opening at the Kittlewan Recreation Park Saturday morning. We are excited for the sunshine. Triborough is holding the parade also Saturday. We have a good handful of older level softball players and major league players participating. Lacrosse, record numbers for both the boys and girls teams. They have been playing games for the past couple weeks and so far so good. In addition, we have exceeded last year's numbers at the clinic levels as well. Ice hockey clinic. A Friday only spring ice hockey clinic in March. The newly formed Kittlewan Youth Hockey Association had an amazing winter season. This group of very passionate and committed families continued to grow this program and began to track new players testing the ice for the first time. Easter egg hunt. The annual Hugs for Hayden Easter egg hunt was the best yet. It was held at Kittlewan High School Field we will do it there um, moving forward for the future. Sadly, uh, the Becker family are moving to Philadelphia, which is very sad, but we will continue the Hugs for Hayden tradition, and Jen Becker hopes to return each year to help with the event. A huge thank you for the family and community services in the areas of Kinawan and not just recreation. Summer camp. Session one is sold out with a wait list, and session two is closing, uh, close to selling out. We are excited to hold the camp at Kinawan High School and have had many meetings planning for the new space. Uh, K-Fest, preliminary plans are being worked out. Sponsorship forms will be sent out next week and blasted through Kinawan and the surrounding towns. We want we wanted to wait for Kesha Tricky Trade to pass before asking for sponsorship and donations. Farmer's Market opening day is June 3rd. <coughs> Carnival will be held in the beginning of August. She did not put a date. Um, the Nixel Communications, a good number of people have signed up for uh, the Nixel Communication Systems after the initial <coughs> launch. I spent time with some of the senior members helping them to get the announcements. I will do another push sign-ups in the future. Veterans Day, um, I'm pretty sure Veterans Day is going to be our Veterans, Kittle One Veterans Day. It's going to be on November 9th, prior to uh, Veterans Day on the uh, Monday following. Uh, more details to follow. Lastly, we had uh, another 21 or 22 uh, military tribute banners that are going to be going up in the community which is uh, something that uh, I spearheaded and uh, take a lot of pride in and uh, put a lot of energy into. We're probably going to set some up uh, just, and this is communication with the families. We're going to set some up over by the schools, by the PRM school, the Keel school. We have some poles we can uh, operate there. And then we're going to utilize the Booten Avenue field uh, by the recreational facilities, also by the school, by the Stony Brook school. 
I personally like really seeing the military tribute banners there just so that the kids recognize them and, um, and understand what they are. And that's pretty much it for me, Frank. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Okay, we'll move on to ordinance and library. You got a busy night tonight with ordinances, so uh, the Councilman Russo. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, Mayor, we have a um, number of ordinances in progress. Um, we're looking into an ordinance concerning the uh, permitting uh, and licensing of filming on the borough property. We are also looking into the extent we can regulate sober houses. Uh, we are working on an, uh, an ordinance required by the state to uh, require an inspection of rental properties built before 1978 for lead paint. And uh, we are also uh, working on an ordinance required by the state uh, to uh, regulate the replacement of trees that may be cut down. So for adoption tonight, we had we had four ordinances on, on, on the uh, agenda. Um, one is to allow uh, non-portable generators to re be replaced in the same location, the same footprint, without zoning review. And I think that's one of the ordinances that's actually going to move through today. Um, we have a, another state-required ordinance that uh, requires that we uh, codify guidelines concerning privately owned salt sheds, the likelihood of any resident in this town having a salt shed is a little bit none, but um, Councilman Harris and I discussed this prior to our meeting and we're going to uh, make a motion to table that until next month. Uh, we have two bond ordinances uh, concerning road paving and construction, and we have an ordinance for Lake Reality Dam, which we have already voted to table. So that is the uh, picture of ordinances. Uh, the Board of Health has a couple ordinances that they're working on. Um, as uh, folks may know, the Board of Health is empowered to uh, enact ordinances dealing with public health issues. They can't enact ordinances outside of that narrow scope. They can't put land use or anything like that, but they can do it for um, health-related issues. And uh, one is to regulate uh, the retail electronic smoking devices and psychoactive substances. Uh, and another is to require a certified food manager to be present at all times in retail food establishments. So those are in the works with the Board of Health. Moving on to the library. Uh, the library is gonna have a fundraiser on um, May 4th. We have our, our semi-annual shredding event and that's gonna take us a place, as I said, Saturday, May 4th from 9 a.m. to noon right here behind Pearl Hall. And the, um, the charge is $10 per banker box to have all of your uh, you know, secure documents shredded right on site uh, with, with the shredding truck. Uh, <clears throat> I would encourage people to um, go to the, the library website, um, you know, that uh, 800 and whatever thousand dollars that the CFO alluded to um, is used not only to run the building, to pay salaries, to pay insurance, to pay utilities. Um, you know, he kind of acted like he didn't know what they were doing with this big pile of money, um, but it's just, it's to run an organization. And uh, part of that, of course, is to have programs and activities for uh, our residents. And I encourage everybody to go to the library website and sign up for notification to, to get notified about all of these really great things that they have going over there. You know, this is one of the premier um, libraries in the area. We get people from municipalities all over who come here um, and they rave about it. They, they say that no libraries in the area are doing what we do and it's unfortunate, Mayor, my feeling is that this council is trying to defund our library, and uh, I think that that is a crying shame. We can't defund the library. It's, it's called a, uh, a state right. ordinance of attack. The, um, the, the, uh, the uh, Hillon High School has asked me 
to promote their intergenerational prom, which is going to take place on Thursday, May 2nd, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the Kinlon High School Gymnasium. Um, and it's an opportunity for senior citizens to come together with uh, Kinlon High School students to get to know each other and to enjoy an evening of music, food, dancing, and other fun activities. So I encourage everybody um, who is a senior citizen to, to come by. Um, uh, I'll be over there and be helping serving food, probably eating most of it. Um, but it's really a great activity to um, bring together people from different generations, get to know each other, and have a little uh, fun activity. Um, Mayor, I want to point out that um, one of the benefits that, that the borough uh, provides our residents is the Dial-A-Ride program. And I don't know if people really are that familiar with, with Dial-A-Ride. So uh, we are in a consortium with uh, five towns which provides um, transportation for residents who are over 60 years old uh, or who are at least 18 years old and have a physical or mental uh, disability, and that includes functional disabilities, um, to get to um, places that they need to get to where they otherwise would not have uh, the opportunity to, um, to get there. Uh, they provide transportation for people who are temporarily disabled by illness or injury, and um, again, it's for people who have no means of, of transportation. You know, if I wake up some morning and I say, well, I just don't feel like driving to the doctor, I'll call guy like, you know, that kind of doesn't work. But you, you know, if you are unable to get to um, uh, a situation that's covered by, by their program, you can call them up and, um, and get that transportation. And it's, it's available for res eligible residents uh, for non-medical emergencies. So don't call them if you've got to go to the emergency room. Call 911. Um, it's to go to nutrition sites, recreational activities, shopping, social services, uh, medical appointments again that are non-emergency, and um, and some and some visitation. Um, if you go to our borough website on the left side of the homepage, you'll see a tab that says uh, Dial a Ride. So click on that, you'll get a little bit more information. Um, registration. Uh, and reservations are required. So if you want further details, you can call Dial a Ride 973 835 8885. Okay, I'll repeat that 973 835 8885. Or you can go to their website uh, because it's based out of Quantic Township. It is PEQ, that's Paul Edward Q, is a queen. Uh, TWP Tom William Paul dot org forward slash the slash that goes this way uh, 157 forward slash dial a ride with a hyphen between dial and a ride. So I encourage uh, seniors who could utilize that service to please um, take advantage of it. It's a, uh, it's a great service that's provided by the borough. Mayor, that's my report. Thank you very okay. much. Make sure you uh, tell the library, great job with the Eclipse. I know they uh, had a bunch of people out on our front lawn here. I was in Sparta, I had nothing but clouds, but I heard it was a beautiful day here, and uh, so it's a, a nice event they pulled together. I will do that, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to Council President Cherno for finance and public safety, and, and nice job on the uh, budget, and to you and your committee, and a nice presentation. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so I'll start with, fi um, with um, uh, public safety. So uh, this, uh, this month is uh, Distractive Driving Awareness Month. Um, it's fitting that it's April, people are out, people are walking, and they're riding their bicycles. So please, uh, please be conscious of your surroundings on the road. There is a, a new law or a law called Pass Safely Law that, uh, that wants you to kind of pull over or at least four feet away from the person that's on the road. Sometimes that's a little difficult due to the road, so they want you to go a little lower than 25 miles an hour. So just be, uh, be cautious of that this month and every month forward. Um, this week is a Dispatcher Appreciation Week, so I want to recognize our dispatchers, thank them for everything they do. They really are the, uh, the first line of safety within the community because when you have a problem, 
Um, they're the first ones uh, answering the phone, trying to uh, de-escalate a situation, calm down whoever's calling, and, uh, and get them to the, uh, to the appropriate uh, safety measures. So I just want to thank them for everything that they do, not only this week, but uh, 365 days a year. Council and Chirdo, I just want to point out that we actually have one of our uh, you know, premier dispatchers in the back of the uh, courtroom, uh, Gail Brissett, and I personally would like to thank Gail for all that she's done for Kim over the years. Gail loves the attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the uh, on the fire company side, um, we are we are days, uh, hopefully days away from uh, receiving tanker uh, the tanker back in the borough after extensive repairs um, from the past uh, year of me reporting about the tanker. We should be receiving it shortly. Um, something that's happened in the past, and we're going to continue on a, on a steady basis. Um, the police department with our fire company, um, as vehicles age out of the police department, we're going to do our best to make sure we repurpose them um, to fit a need in our, in our fire company. Um, we have the Tahoe um, that was uh, aging out of the police department, so we're able to repurpose that to the fire company um, to be a utility vehicle, tow the boat. Uh, currently what they were towing the boat was uh, with a, I think it was a 2006 Honda Pilot that uh, just due to due to extensive rust uh, needed to be taken out of service, which was a vehicle that was donated to them. So hopefully this will be a, a good flow of repurposing throughout the, uh, throughout the two departments. Uh, pancakes, 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 this Saturday, get your pancakes, or Sunday, Sunday, Ooh, Gail just stared at <laughs> Sunday, get your pancakes, uh, company one. Um, it's, it's not only pancakes, but it's supporting an amazing cause and, uh, and you get to have some Good fellowship with uh, fellow members of the community. So, 7 a.m. is when it starts, right here. 7 a.m. Um, so, please uh, come on out. Uh, so, finance. Um, when we introduce a budget, I always like to look back at the year and uh, how did we do? Did we do a good job? Did we not do a good job? So, um, it feels like um, years, but it's only been 12 months that uh, Councilman Maybe, Councilman Harris, and myself, as the Finance Committee, sat down with every single department head within the borough and said, what do we need? What do we need in this, in this borough, in your department, to, to keep moving forward? Uh, we took all that information, we met as a governing body, we prioritized it into a long list, and we started chipping away at it. And, uh, and again, in this report, um, I can categorize that last year, I guess you could say we did a, a definite focus on public safety. We uh, re, uh, um, renewed or got a new dispatching desk, um, got new tablets in our patrol vehicles, um, replaced a, a, an engine from 1991 that was that was almost older than I was, or maybe I was younger than the engine. I don't really know. Um, we uh, we digitized our records, upgraded our servers, put a septic system down at Boonton Avenue Field that uh, is just going to save tons of money down the road because we would have to go, um, you know, Sean what was it like every month or so and pump out tanks during the season. It's it's weekly, weekly, and that was a very very costly endeavor that we decided. Um, we, need to, we need to invest in, in putting that system in so that we can save down the road. Um, hired a grant writer, uh, which we were able to reap the benefits of a $72,000 grant for our fire company, which the, the highest award in the state of New Jersey was $75,000, so Kenilon did pretty good in that. Um, and then last year we, we, we started out with a, a pretty good paving program, and uh, we had a roadblock, no pun intended, but um, you know we live and we learn, and Sean it, it's a testament to, to him chairing the DPW committee, and um, you know we definitely learned from last year. And um, and like Sean said, the pavers are here. That was our commitment to, to make sure that that we paved. Uh, I think we're going to pave roughly 30 streets. Don't quote me on this, but I think it's around like seven or eight miles of roads, depending on my little little scale on my computer when I when I put it <laughs> up there. Um, and then a couple of other areas uh, in the bond ordinances tonight. Another commitment was facility uh, facilities. We're going to be um, redoing, completely renovating our tennis courts at Fulton Avenue Field, uh, basketball courts, like Sean said, um, and, and the list goes on. I think we had about 25 to 30 items that we pulled together a year ago, planted those seeds, and now we're now we're reaping what we sowed. And uh, the only thing I can say, Mayor, is uh, you know the sky's the limit when we all work together as a team for the betterment of the community. So thank you uh, for an amazing. Uh, financial year and I look forward to the next one. The only thing I would mention is your tennis court can 
it will also be lined for pickleball. Yes, yes. Yes, yes you yes. don't want to get killed by the pickleball people. Yeah, yeah. They're, They're very aggressive. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but thank you, for, uh, thank you for your report. No problem. All right, coordinating Councilwoman Frank. Thanks, Mayor. You're welcome. So I attended a very productive meeting again last Tuesday with the Historical Society on their ongoing progress to reopen the museum. So I'm looking forward to more updates on that in the next few months. And speaking of history and seniors, I was happy to also receive an invite from the Kinelon High School President Gary Suda to attend the intergenerational prom for seniors on May 2nd. So I'm looking forward to representing the council over there. And last, I received confirmation from the rep from Columbia Bank and the landscaping company that they will be here next Wednesday for the planting of the new red oak tree they generously donated to the borough in celebration of Arbor Day. Yeah, it's going to be great. Thank you. You're welcome. I will be there also on May 2nd, so we will have to get matching uh, prom outfits, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think the theme is uh, Hawaiian or, or something, a luau theme. Oh, so. okay. I wasn't, you know, or I might be lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Councilwoman. All right, we'll move on to, should we do hearing from the public first or new business? Yeah, I don't think there's anything on there. So let's go, let's go to hearing from the public first. So does anybody from the public want to be heard? Come on up. We don't ask for your name or address anymore, so welcome aboard. If you want to say your name and address, you're more than welcome, although we all know you, Cliff. <laughs> you're welcome. Unfortunately. I'll say it in a coaching Antonio 17 like you talked about. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor of the Council. Hi, Mr. Goodwin. Um, thank you for the time. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I know that the ordinance that I'm here to talk about with Lake Reality has been tabled, and uh, personally, I think it's probably that that was done, uh, so I have no quarrel with that. Uh, but I'm here to give you an update on what the dam committee from Lake Reality has been doing since last month's meeting. Uh, we heard the concerns at last month's meeting, and I've been trying diligently to respond to them and assuage the concerns of Lake Reality property owners regarding this loan and the dam renovations. As an initial matter, we have reconstituted the dam committee. If you remember, the lake's got a board but we also had a subcommittee that was formed uh, to handle solely this dam renovation, and that's the A dam renovation. <laughs> um, we reconstituted that um, president of the lake, uh, Ben Sapinski, and the treasurer of the lake, Bob Phillips, have both stepped down. Um, there had been an expressed concern that the two of them don't live within Lake Reality and maybe didn't have the best uh, best inclination towards the lake. Uh, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. They both put a lot of work into this process, but again, the concern was raised. So they have graciously stepped down and we've uh, pulled on a couple of new members. Um, first, we have uh, Tom Perch, who is a lakefront property owner. And we also have Jane Critcher and Bill Cannon, who are former presidents, both live off the lake, but they're both former presidents of the lake and are very familiar with the dam fund, as you may recall. Um, I think it may have been Ms. Pritchard that started collecting the dam fund way back when, like 20 years ago. The lake's not required to have that dam fund, but they decided to do it anyway. We've been charging for 20 years and have been off, able to offset a lot of our costs with that dam fund. And we still have some left over, which I'll touch on in a minute. Um, but it's good not only having Mr. Perch on uh, because he's lakefront and understands the concerns of those property owners, but again, having uh, Jane and Bill on being past presidents who know about the dam renovation because it's been going on that long and the dam fund and all that. It's good to have all this knowledge within the committee now. Um, Rob, Elia, and myself have stayed on the committee for continuity purposes. Um, and uh, just a reminder to everyone that we're all volunteers, not only the board at the lake, but the commit this dam committee. None of us have ever taken out a loan from the state. None of us have ever dealt with the DEP. None of us have ever had to rebuild a dam or deal with anything like this. We, from the beginning, we've been doing the best we can. It may have ruffled some feathers. That was never our intent. We thought we were doing what we needed to do. Apparently that wasn't uh, satisfying to everybody. So we're doing our best. 
Um, now, the dam fund, as I mentioned, um, after last month's meeting, we decided to have a meeting in the library with our treasurer, Bob Phillips, who, by the way, is stepping down this year after eight years as treasurer. Um, we had a formal meeting at the library to which all the Lake Reality neighbors were invited. So the, just for the record, he, uh, Bob Phillips was on your committee and he is a certified CPA. Correct? He is, correct. He was a treasurer for the Lake and on the committee. Okay. He was a very big help um, with all the work he's put in. Um, so we had that meeting last Sunday um, for people to, for everyone in the Lake Reality neighborhood to come in and listen to Bob, the treasurer, the outgoing treasurer, to explain the dam fund and what's been going on with the dam fund over the last 20 or so years. Now, he had only been treasurer for the prior eight years, so he couldn't speak unequivocally about what happened before him, but he had some records that he had inherited. Unfortunately, I believe none of, or at least the few treasurers for the lake before Bob were not CPAs. So the records kind of hit and miss, uh, but he was able to pull what he could to try and reconcile everything. And he was able to explain to the people in attendance at the meeting, which there wasn't a lot of people, uh, how much has been uh, collected from the fund to date, how much has been expended from the fund, and on what aspects of the renovation. I discussed that last month. We paid for engineering, legal costs, all of that. Um, and how much is currently in the fund. Uh, he also explained how since he had become treasurer, uh, he had made several changes to the lake's finances to increase the lake's income and to increase the contributions to the dam fund. For instance, investing any money that the dam fund that we had in the dam fund in a CD, so we were getting five percent instead of one percent, whatever it is. He really went above and beyond trying to get as much money into the fund as possible. Uh, next, we had a meeting with the real estate appraiser who issued that report that I think we're all that well versed on. Uh, that was a point of contention. We had that here in this room uh, last uh, three weeks ago, I believe. Um, and the purpose of that meeting was to lay out the property valuations report for the properties in the neighborhood. That meeting, to my memory, lasted about an hour, and he answered every question that was put to him, even questions that were written and submitted uh, at a time. Again, all Lake neighbors, Lake Reality neighbors were invited, and a number of questions from the people in the audience were uh, offered to the appraiser, and he answered every single one of them. Uh, the meeting was also broadcast, thankfully, uh, to the borough and the mayor, uh, Frida, was broadcast on, uh, I believe, the borough's Facebook account, and it's our understanding that some people did watch it, watch it live, but afterwards, the lake uh, also sent out a link to everyone in the neighborhood with the Facebook, a link to the, that Facebook meeting. So even if they couldn't have watched it live, they could watch it later on. Another concern of a few property owners is the financial history of the lake. Again, I find it sad, in a way, that um, the lake thought it was doing something good by collecting the dam fund over the last 20 years to defray the cost of this, and now the, the fund is causing a lot of consternation. It's a little ironic. But anyway, um, a concern of several of the property owners in Lake Reality is the financial history of the lake itself. In that regard, uh, the committee uh, is in the process of gathering all the lake's financial records and will offer them to whomever wants to look them over, top to bottom, start to finish. Along those lines, I think the lake is also trying to put more of these records online so they're easier to access uh, by people in the neighborhood rather than having to come over and go through bankers' boxes. Um, next, uh, there was a concern amongst uh, the property owners in the uh, neighborhood that the cost of the dam renovation will be over the $750,000 limit that we've been approved and that somehow we would be required to get a second loan to cover the overages that may um, occur. Again, to assuage this concern, we're arranging to have a letter signed by Ben Sapinski, who's still the late president, advising that when the bids for the dam renovation are in, if they are near or over the $750,000 limit, we will meet with everyone in the neighborhood to, to discuss whether we want to go ahead with it or not. I remind everyone that at this point, the lake still has a little over $100,000 in the dam fund. So we're hoping that if there are any overages, we'll be set to address those.
But again, if it gets near or over that 750, we're going to meet with everybody and see what the decision is and leave it up to the neighbors. The committee uh, has also drafted a plan that should allow the Lake Association to make payments toward the loan repayment each year. And we hope that that plan will provide a significant reduction of the annual assessment payments for all of the Lake Reality property owners. The plan will, of course, depend on the actual size and lake membership count each year, because it's going to be coming in from the dues, and we're still going to collect, to a certain extent, the dam fund. Uh, but whatever the lake, and I keep saying we are not on the board, so I can't guarantee it, but um, what we are proposing is that basically any extra money the lake brings in each year, including for the dam fund, that would be put into a trust. Um, the um, committee member, Tom Perch, has begun discussions with borough attorney Brian Yearlin on how to establish what's called a dedicated trust to make this happen. So we can put the money in there and hopefully each year use whatever chunk of money we get as the first payment on the assessment and then all the other property owners pay whatever the remainder is. That's our hope. We also know that there are concerns about the assessment constituting a lien on the properties in the neighborhood. It's our expectation that we can make it clear that the assessment can be transferred with the property if and when the property owner sells their property to someone else. That way, it won't have to be paid off at the time of the sale and can remain with the property and be paid by the new homeowners going forward after that sale. We are hopeful that perhaps something can be put into the audience, but oh, excuse me, ordinance itself to explain that the assessment is will be transferable to uh, home purchasers. So that is the status of the uh, Lake Reality Dam Committee's work so far over the past month. We meet in person on a weekly basis, uh, as the mayor mentioned. Uh, we exchange texts and emails uh, at least on a daily basis, uh, working to resolve all of the concerns I've mentioned and then any others that we think may crop up. I believe we're making headway and hope to resolve all concerns with this process before the project is completed. We look forward to having a detailed, cordial discussion with all the lake property owners, especially the lakefront owners, so that we can come to an agreement on moving forward with the financing of this project. Thank you, Mayor. Any questions for Cliff? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks, Cliff. Thank you for all the work you're doing, Cliff, on behalf of your community. Thank you. I we really appreciate it. it. Sorry if I ran over time. No. <laughs> I forgot the time. <laughs> <laughs> I tried talking about it. <laughs> Anyone else from the public like to be heard? Okay. All right, we're going to close it to the public. All right, we're going to move on to new business, introduction of Ordinance 824, an ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and establish a cap bank for calendar year 2024. Is this one over here okay ordinance year 2024 an ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriating limit by one percent and establish a cap bank i need a motion to introduce make a motion i need a second second a roll call please yes 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 okay whereas the above ordinance was introduced at this meeting held on march April 18th and read by title and passed on the first reading. Sorry, Karen. Now, therefore, be resolved that at the regular meeting to be held on April May. 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 Sorry. It's June. Yeah, Everybody it's, got June's date? Yeah, it'll be that. It'll be June. June. Third, third Thursday of June. Uh, third Thursday is the 20th. Yep. Okay, the 20th of June. At 7 p.m. prevailing time at the Kinlaw Municipal Building, this council will further consider for second reading and final passage of this said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the borough clerk of this borough is hereby directed to publish, publish proper notice thereof. I make motion to write those changes down. Second. Oh, roll call, please. I'm sorry. What, what we, that was already adopted. Yeah, that was already adopted. I just read that at the bottom. Oh, I thought we were doing the resolution. Yeah. Now we're going to do the resolution. Oh, I thought that was the resolution. Uh, so Okay, now we're moving on to oh, it's all screwy today. 
the resolution 4 9 2024 introduction of the 2024 budget do i have a motion to approve make a motion second roll call to approve yes Yes. Council Harris? Yes. Council Harris? No. Councilman Chernow? Yes. Councilman Frank. Yes. Councilman Frank, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, payment of bills for April 18th, 2024. Everyone had the opportunity to look at our new bill list. Everybody got their questions answered, hopefully. I need a motion to approve. Make a motion. Any second? Second. Roll call. Yes. Councilman Harris? Yes. Councilman Mady? Yes. Councilman Russo? Yes. Councilman Churros? Yes. Councilman Frank? Yes. Okay, I need the consent agenda. We have C through J. I need a motion to approve. Make a motion. Second. Roll call. Councilman Yes. Councilman Harris? Yes. Yes. Councilman Russo? Yes. Councilman Churros? Yes. Councilman Frank? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to old business. Uh, A is public adoption of the ordinance. For a special assessment for Lake Reality, we tabled that, so we'll move on to B. Um, Mayor, make a motion that we table that to next month. I have, before we anyone seconds it, I have a question. That's, sure. Since we're going to alter it, possibly, do we need to withdraw the ordinance? So it, that, or um, depends. It, 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 you just would not take it from the table. You would reintroduce a new ordinance next month or whenever you so want. So just leave mm -hmm. this just one. leave it on the table. Mm -hmm. Change the number and then reintroduce it? Correct. Okay. So, what, so we table it. So I need so a second. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Ordinance 5-2024, an ordinance repealing and replacing Section 148 of Chapter 207 of the Borough of Kinlon Code titled Permanently Installed Non-Portable Generators and Air Conditioning Units. This ordinance was introduced at last at our meeting held on March 21st, 2024. The proper notice was published as required by law. A copy was posted on the Municipal Bulletin Board. Additional copies were made available to the public. This meeting is now open to anyone who would like to speak on Ordinance 5-2024. Hearing none, I will now close the meeting to the public and bring it back to the dais. Does anyone on the council wish to speak at this time? Okay, I need a motion to adopt Ordinance 5-24. So moved. A second. Second. Roll call, please. Yes. Councilman Harris? Yes. Councilman Mady? Yes. Councilman Russo? Yes. Councilman Frank? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, now we're on to ordinance number 6, 2024. It's a bond ordinance appropriating $1,750,000 and authorizing the issuance of $1,650,000 bonds or notes of the borough for various improvements or purposes authorized to be undertaken by the borough of Kinelon in the county of Mars, New Jersey. Did you just mix two? Are we on D or E? Right, it should be on D. Yeah. D. D. Right, 6 2024? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This ordinance was introduced at last at our meeting held on March 21st, 2024. The proper notice was published as required by law. A copy of posted on the municipal bulletin board. Additional copies are made available to the public. This meeting is now open to anyone who would like to speak on Ordinance 6 24. All right, hearing none, I'll now close the meeting to the public, bring it back to the dais. Does anyone on the council wish to speak at this time? Okay, I need a motion to adopt Ordinance 6 24. Make a motion. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Yes. Councilman Harris? Yes. Councilman Mady? Yes. Councilman Russo? Yes. Councilman Churro? Yes. Councilman Frank? Yes. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to ordinance number 7-24, better known as our last one. 
<laughs> it's a bond ordinance appropriating $1,300,000 and authorizing the issuance of $1,235,000 in bonds or notes for the borough for various road improvements or purposes authorized to be undertaken by the borough of Kenlon and the county of Mars. This ordinance was introduced at our last meeting on March 21st, 24. The proper notice was published as required by law. A copy was posted on the municipal bulletin board. Additional copies were made available to the public. This meeting is now open to anyone who would like to speak on this ordinance. Okay, we will now close the meeting to the public, bring it back to the dais. Does anyone on the council like to speak at this time? Okay, then I need a motion to adopt Ordinance 724. Make a motion. Second. All right, roll call, please. Councilman Yes. Councilman Harris? Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Russo? Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Okay, new business, I see none. Uh, tax collector's report and investment officer's report, please. Tax collector's report. During the month of March, the tax collector's office processed a total of 274864 dollars and thirty seven cents. Investments officer's report, a total of forty nine thousand eight hundred eighty dollars and fifty five cents was earned in interest for the month of March two thousand twenty four. Okay, thank you. Uh, a district school payment of three million three hundred twenty one thousand four hundred ninety five dollars and sixty seven cents I need someone that wants to pay the school make a motion second second roll call please yes 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 okay thank you um, appointments I'll start with the Board of Adjustment uh, we have an alternate one Gene Pasalacqua, um, his, his, he will expire at 1226. Um, Barbara Hall was our second appointment, but I spoke to Barbara Hall this afternoon. Um, and after speaking to her, she told me that thank you for the offer, but she got too busy at work. She's a cardiac, cardiac nurse, and she said she's working 12-hour shifts. And although she appreciates the uh, appointment, she won't be able to do it because she said she's Way too busy, which I understand. So Barbara is off. So it'll be Jean Pasolasco as alternate one, and Mike Nicosia is was currently an alternate. We're moving him to the voting position that's open on the Board of Adjustment. So I need a motion to approve Make those two appointments. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? Okay, welcome to the Board of Adjustment. All right, now we're moving on to two committees that we forgot to appoint in January. Uh, Utilities Committee and the IT Committee. I need a motion to approve. Make a motion. I need a second. Second. I need a roll call. Councilman Yarko? No. Councilman Yarko? Yes. Councilman Harris? Yes. 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 Okay, so those committees are formed. Um, Thank you, Mayor. I just looked look this up. I, I read it earlier. The alternate position is a two year, so if that became vacant in January of 24, it would be through December of 25, not 26. But it, it can't be a three-year appointment. It's a two-year appointment. And so two years from now would be December of 2025. Oh, from now, even though it went back from 2007. Well, Mike, well, Mike, Mike Nicosia was appointed this January appointed to that position, January, and Gene's taking his position. Up into a so doesn't he keep his 26? He keeps, he keeps Mike's 26. Right. Okay, so Mike Nicosi is going to a regular position. If, that ex yes. if it's the unexpired term that goes through 26, that's possible because a regular yes. term is four years. What I'm saying, though, is the alternate one, Mr. Pasolacqua, it can expire on 1226 because the term is two years. That's three years from now, so that's not possible. So it's 25. It's either 25 or 24 if it's a one, 
there was one year oh, okay, left. Okay, I got you. Yeah. It's a two-year appointment. It'd be twenty-five. Was it empty last year? Yes. Then it should expire the end of this year. Okay. No, 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 no. No, I'm sorry. We appointed this All January. The one that we're appointing tonight was, was Mike Mike's Nicosia. position. We're moving Mike up into the vacancy and giving this new so guy this will be his Mike's position. first year, so it expires, okay. expires on 26. 25. 25. 25. 25. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, we did both. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we adjourn, I want to say to Gail, thank you for your service in our town, and also I hope your dad is, uh, is feeling better. Please let him know that we are uh, thinking about him. I know Sunday is his favorite time of the year. I'm sure he's going to miss it, but uh, hopefully you can bring him some pancakes. So, mm -hmm. but uh, just tell him that we're thinking about him as always. So, so with, I need a Glenn Cisco motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Set. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, go Colts. Have a safe trip. Thank you.